Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. We'll move to 2.0. Uh, Lori, do we have any public comments? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. We'll move to 3.1 budget explanation, Superintendent Doak. Well, good evening and thank you for attending the meeting. Um, as always, it's nice to see the, the public come out. So I'll go through the proposed budget that the school board has accepted for the, for the following school year. Um, funding schools always starts with two, two variables, the, the valuation of a community and of course the student population. Um, and the valuation of most main communities has gone up since COVID because of the home sales have gone up and evaluation is set by that in most cases. So uh, we did see an increase in, in the valuation of both communities in the RSU. Student population has also increased um, from last year by about 31 and a half students. Um, so those two variables are uh, very important in funding schools. So um, we would be, in a world of hurt, if our student population was dropping and our valuation was going up, um, then that would be um, considered more more onus on the towns to pay for schools in state. Uh, but we are a fairly high state receiver, which is is a is, is nice to have. So, um, so when the student population goes up, I always estimate around 22 students or so. You start to see an increase, and you'll see as we go through the slides, we got a considerable increase in state aid this year, also. So we look at the population. This is Carroll High School um, from the previous year, uh, which was 427. Uh, projected for next year is 467. Uh, we've gone up considerably in the last seven, eight years, and um, it's kind of the goal that we wanted, you know, Carroll to be the school of choice. Um, and with the great education that kids are receiving, the great teachers that we have, we've drawn in uh, a number of kids in, into the system. Uh, which is what every school community should want. Um, and you'll see there will be a, an even bigger increase in the community school. So um, at one point in time, uh, fluctuating between last year and this year, we were the uh, largest high school in Rooster County. Uh, we were five students more than Prescott. So one, so uh, that's, that's good news. <coughs> When you look at the community school, there's significant increases uh, from last year in both of our, you know, pre-K to, to three and, and four to eight. Um, at one point in time, we were 780 students. Um, I remember when the school was first built, uh, a few people in the community pulled me inside and said, you know, we need to market the school. And we need to make sure that we get kids in this new school. And when we opened the doors, uh, just prior to Thanksgiving in 2020, we were roughly about 700 kids. So from 2020, we put 80 more kids in that building. And we always knew when a school's built, there is an economic driver behind it. Um, when we built the new school, we always talked about 750 kids being capacity. It actually, the real capacity is about 800. Um, and we're, we're pretty close to 800. Um, so, it's, um, it's, it's good and bad because it puts a lot of strain on your administration, um, puts a lot of strain on teachers, but in a good point, um, they have a beautiful school. Um, and everybody I talk to, uh, Southern Maine included, I tell them you gotta come see this school. Every Maine student, every Maine student should have a school like that to go through. Um, and it, it does attract great teachers and it attracts families that wanna live in New And we, we've kind of shown that. So 80 kids, since the day we opened it is, is quite an accomplishment. Uh, roughly, uh, when we've been set that for teachers per grade level for some time now, um, 
although when these numbers start creeping up, you know, we may need to look at what will happen if we, you know, if we do get to that 800, you, you may need to add a grade level or two a teacher just to offset those numbers. So, questions? Yes. Yes, sir. I have a question, Kay, that uh, you said that uh, because of the uh, increased enrollment, Kay, um, have you could look to uh, capacitate that um, in down the line? I mean, uh, if we look to uh, increase that, Kay, is anticipate that? Uh, increase, increase what again? The teaching staff? Anticipate the enrollment. Yeah. And uh, so, Teachers and this sort of thing. Absolutely, that's a good question. Um, when you start hovering around 22, 23, and 24, which we're getting close to it, and there, I always say 25 or more in those lower grades. You do need to think about another teacher to put in those grade levels. That that 24, 25 is where we need to say, okay, if we get any more, we might have to break that up and, and put another teacher. We're getting there. We think about it all the time, Jane and I. Um, but in this case, we didn't add any new teachers for next year. That's a good question. Uh, something that I uh, wanted to point out again this year, when you when you look at the per pupil cost for students in Maine, I listed out the Rooster County schools. Um, I also have another slide that compares us to schools in the state of Maine, our size, and we run fairly competitive tech. I, I just didn't put it in here. Um, uh, when you see 2022-23, it's actually 21-22 data because the state's always a year back. Um, but our issue 39's high school uh, is the most efficient run high school in Worcester County. We're putting more product out for the cost per child, which is a, it's a great number. We are below the state average for tuition, which means we're running efficient. Uh, this would be the state average, the 12.5589. As you see that all the way through, um, that means these schools are operating more than the 12.55. So um, once you reach that threshold of over the 12.55, which was the state average, then um, you, this is all you can charge for tuition. But it actually might cost you this. When you look at the bottom, that's a lot, that's a lot of money per student. Um, when you look at that, that's almost a tuition rate of more now. Yes. I have a question. Okay, so your uh, cost per tuition per student, okay, is based upon the student that you have and based upon the revenue that you have coming in. Is that correct? Uh, the, the basis is on price. the basis is on the total budget that we have right. versus number of students that we have. So, and the state establishes that every year, and the printout it comes out in end of January. So that's how we know. Okay, we're so if you're able to take in more students, okay, wouldn't you be able to lower that tuition cost? Oh, that's a great question. Because my other district, we we wrestle with this all the time, and I'm in Fort Fairfield. Um, you want to bring in more students, but once you bring in more students, and you have to raise the number of teachers that you have to hire, that cost could increase a lot. But if your if your classrooms are able to handle the teachers, the uh, so then that uh, what what's the difference? Okay, it's, uh, um, it's my understanding, okay, that Carroll High School, okay, and our Carroll School System loses students to Woodland State Prison, okay, other places because that uh, and we pay tuition costs to other students out there, okay, our other school systems out there because they want to go there. So if your schools, if your what. I guess the question, my, my question is here, what's your capacity? What's your capacity per school at, uh, based on grade levels? Yeah, so the capacity um, would be, the, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but if you look at all the rooms we have in Caribou High School that are being used for classrooms, and you max them out at 20 plus kids in a classroom, say 25, that's your max. We're not quite there yet. Uh, we do have space in Caribou High School to accommodate that. We don't pay tuition out to any other district because it's always a superintendent's agreement. Now, those kids may go over to, to Woodland on the superintendent's agreement. They get the funding and the formula, which is a little bit less than a tuition rate. You always want to take tuition money over uh, money that goes into the formula because it's a better, better, it's a higher cost of the district. But we don't pay that because we have all our grade levels. The schools that don't, like the limestones and the woodlands that don't have high school, 
they by law have to pay tuition to another school system to attend that. They pay school, they pay that tuition to you? Or do you, in other words, if my child's let me care of, okay, I decide I want my child to go to a uh, Woodland school system. Yeah. You have to see either you, if I don't sign a superintendent's agreement with Woodland or they don't sign it, they don't want your child to go there, then you have a choice to pay tuition. They probably will sign your child. They go to Woodland, and then the money in the formula from the state follows the child, which is lower than the tuition rate because it has to go through the formula, which is a reduced rate. So, uh, uh, for instance, this 10000 could be certain like 7200 but they're able to house that student and teach that student at that rate. Say that again? Be able to teach that student at that rate. Uh, yeah, we, we, we're teaching all of our kids at that rate because that's what the state gives us as a community to care about and stop them, so. Yeah. Lori, do we have another mic for questions from the floor? I can get one, yeah. Just makes it easier for everybody to hear the question. Um, this is the elementary school, and uh, remember what I told you, uh, they go back, the, this is actually a lot higher, so next year's number, if, you, if the incoming superintendent uses a slide like this, it will be a much higher number because they always use the year prior. So, But the elementary school has climbed in efficiency also. Uh, last year they were in the middle of the pack, uh, but they have crept up to be a cost-efficient operation. So. So our first budget came in a little over $24 million, and I always show you this slide every year just so you know what we were up against. Uh, that's $3.3 million over last year and 16%. Now, there are a lot of schools in Maine that are going forward with that 16 and even 20% increases in their budget. Um, the schools I talked to in Rooster County all seem to be about the same range that we are, 5 6% increase. But I do know some schools in Southern Maine that are way over 16%. So. And we'll tell you why that's happening. So this is the state data that we get from our 279. I show it to you every year. This is last year's numbers. This is next year's numbers. Uh, the big change here is the mill rate of 7.1 to 6.97. That is not the community mill rate. That is the state mill rate that's set in Augusta for all the communities. That's not the community mill rate. That's the state mill rate that's set for all communities. So if you're living in Bangor, you live in South Portland, you live in Fort Kent, you live in Cary, it's the same mill rate. Now, this 6.9 is uh, allows for a less uh, of a local share. Um, and there was an adjustment made probably a month or two, a month and a half ago, to they overinflated this number and they adjusted the state. So we got a lot of state money this year. Uh, the only thing I, I, I question about the 6.9 is. If you operate with an additional local, which most schools do, there are some that don't, but if you do, like RSU, that, that's a shift in money from what's required from the local. The local must pay this money to the state to get the 14 million. So the locals must pay the 2.8 million to get to the 14.9. If you don't pay that local, say tonight we don't vote that article in, then we don't get the 14 million from the state. So it's almost you have to vote that in to get the state funds. Uh, but if you go if you go down in your additional and your uh, local allocation, chances are your additional local will go up slightly to offset the missing money. So. Um, and if you go up in your local allocation, which we had before, because we would have last year, um, then you ask for less in your additional local. Um, Main State Retirement, I always mention this. At one point in time, Maine paid 100% teacher retirement. Now it's 50-50 with the districts, 50 the state, and 50 with the, the, the local district. That's been in for about um, eight, well, I've been here eight years, so it's uh, eight or nine for sure. So. so uh, if you would ask me, what do you think? Did we fare fairly well? We fared really well. I've stood up here uh, a few years ago and we had close to a negative number. There are communities in Aroostook County that have a negative number for the state allocation. They lost a lot of money. And one recent district in the county is cutting 10 teachers to survive the loss. So, a new, new slide that we've never really shown before, but this is all the local allocation monies, the grant re uh, revenues that we received throughout the district for the coming year. 
there's our ESSER funds that are slowly ending. So they're ending next September. Uh, we have to watch that. ESSER two funds are ending this September. So we'll have no more of those funds. You will not see any more of those funds from what the state tells us. I think it's going to be very tough for communities once these funds are gone. So we have one more year to prepare for what I believe will be a cliff um, for the community uh, and for, for schools. Uh, title, uh, all these title funds um, are in place. Um, and then our local entitlement, our Title I, that's for um, special ed students at risk. Or title II is professional development for teachers, teacher prep. Class size reduction, that's where we use money to offset salaries of a teacher or two to help in the budget process. And then, of course, our ESSER funds. So um, for the last six years, wait, uh, seven years, um, we've uh, gone into some revenue sharing and uh, we've generated revenue from outside districts. Um, Set 20 for administrative services, that would have been uh, my office, uh, some special ed services, um, we shared food service directors. Um, that started out at 75,000, so we've climbed and that, some of that money does go to the person doing the job, but a lot of it generated revenue for the school district to offset taxes in the town. Um, going forward, um, we're no longer uh, gonna be entertaining those shared services. So all those services have been pulled back. Uh, we shared with the CT director in, in SAD 1, and we also shared uh, with superintendents in Van Bjorn. I have a question, sir. Okay, so in other words, when you were uh, subcontracting superintendent services and other services to other school districts, was that money uh, being generated back to the SAD or the, the RSU, and it was, your salaries were being compensated uh, or reduced by that? In other words, you were spending time in other uh, SADs, okay, whatever, um, and being compensated by them, okay? Uh, but you just made a statement, okay, that uh, those uh, services or that revenue was being generated directly back to the individual person? Yes, uh, it was a shared uh, piece. Uh, when I was uh, doing services um, in Fort Fairfield, when the special ed director was doing services in Fort Fairfield, when the assistant superintendent was doing services in Van Bjorn, uh, when Adult Dead does services for Limestone in Fort Fairfield, when Food Service does services, it, money is generated into the district. The district gets a portion of that money, and the individual doing the work gets a portion of that money. When you're, so in other words, you were being, uh, getting more money for doing what you were doing. In other words, is that your salary work were not compensated by the revenue that was coming in? Yes, uh, the salary, I was getting money for that coming in, yes. I was earning money for doing that. Additional, more than above your salary. Yeah, one above the caregiver salary. At no cost of it, you know, to the caregiver tax budget, because it no, didn't. It wasn't, but you were, it was additional revenue. If you were being uh, allowed to go out and to uh, do uh, additional services, okay, that money should have been compensated to the RSU. It was. And that was the RSU did get a portion of that money back to the RSU. I, I said that earlier for the, which generated revenue uh, in our revenue line by me doing those services. The RSU 39 received money from that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Are, are you saying that I shouldn't have received the money for it? No, I am not saying that correctly. I said, I, but it should have been okay. Your salary is your salary. Like uh, any other uh, department head, okay, whatever. If you're being contracted out, okay, yep. um, and in other words, okay, that the, the salary, that money should have been coming back in to take care of your salary, okay, and uh, without any additional revenue uh, or an additional uh, uh, bargain, additional revenue. And I think that uh, that's because your hours were reduced working for the company you're working for, okay. So well, that's that's not that's not accurate. Well, so if you're doing, you're doing additional hours, okay, and I would like to see the hours report there, whatever. Uh, but if you're taking a day off through the week to go take care of another administration or something like that, then that uh, and be compensated for that, then 
The RSU should be compensated for that lost time. They did. They they received money for that time, me not being in the district. Yeah. Well, they have. I'd love to see that in that and in, in, in book reform. Yep, actually, we have the whole spreadsheet on that. So, but like I said, uh, we're not doing that uh, going forward. We've we sent it everybody from doing that, um, which is the revenue that we've lost for the district because the district was compensated for the time that we spent. Correct, but if the, if the individual people that were doing the work at the same time were compensated, then I'll let you know how much um, lost revenue was done by the uh, lost revenue was uh, lost by the RSU. Well, yeah, no, I understand that, but there really wasn't any because I didn't stop working for the RSU when I was in Fort Traffic. Right? I took all the phone calls, I made all the emails, and I even did Zoom meetings while I sat in that office. So, and I would say that for everybody else that, that does that too. Anyway, we'll, that's no longer going to happen, unfortunately. So we lost revenue to the districts. Did we lose actually revenue or did the individual? The district lost revenue by pulling back on those uh, programs that we provided. 300,000, so the district probably lost about 100,000. When you look at all these combinations, so it just wasn't, I think people feel that it was just me doing that, but this district took a wholehearted approach to doing shared services about seven years ago, so it's special ed. Bus services, union, uh, when we do bus services for Woodland, Washburn, uh, Fort Fairfield, those buses all come to our garage and we do work on those. So it's, a, it's the same thing, we generate revenue. But if you want to look at it in the lens that you're looking at it in, then we're losing time to Fort Fairfield, losing time to Woodland. So, but it's, it's unfortunate. So we did maintain our uh, computer services with uh, Washburn and Woodland at uh, $50,000. So we'll generate 50,000. Some of that will be off. Uh, not much of that this year, the 50,000 will go to the district. Unfortunately, uh, we did cut a few positions to help save with taxes and not raise the mill rate too, too significantly. Um, the three positions here, we've had an advertisement for a music teacher for two years now. We haven't had one applicant. We've had a math position open for two years. We have had one applicant. And world languages is a position that we made a cut. Um, the person uh, has been informed that they will not have a job here next year, but that person did find work in another district. And um, we actually uh, reduced, um, out of ESSER money, 11 ed techs. We cut five of the ed techs and had to hire back five, uh, six just to uh, maintain a quality program for students. So, um, and we sometimes wonder what's happening with education. Why, you know, what, what's happening? Like, wh why aren't we having people go into schools and work? It, it's, uh, and I did have a direct conversation with the director of the music program at Ornham, University of Maine. Last year, they had one graduate in the music program. This year, they have eight. One student showed an interest in Northern Maine and was at Fort Fairfield. And to date, we still haven't got an application. All of them are going to go south. But we wonder what's happening with why people aren't going into education. So, unfortunately, we had to make those cuts. Um, some capital improvement projects that we had to take out of the budget to make sure that we didn't raise the mill rate. And suffice the taxpayer uh, in, in, in this budget. Uh, the abatement of the old boiler at CHS, it will still sit in the same place it's been in. Uh, we had some floor tiles that probably should come out. They stated uh, we took that out of the budget, siding for the athletic building, which is next to the soccer field. Um, half a roof project over the gymnasium. If it's not done next year, you need to look at doing it for the following year. Overhead doors at, at the CTE Center. Uh, replacement of ceiling tiles at the CTE Center. And of course, uh, that is a, a really low, well, okay, this is not what it costs to pave um, Caribou High School in the vocational center. The cost of paving the vocational center in the high school here is roughly almost $800,000. This is just what we put in the budget to try to maintain. And we felt, you know, if we're gonna 
get a school budget and lower taxes and not raise taxes too much. Uh, we'll have to take it out. You all drove in here tonight. And it's, you know, it's one of the things that um, I, I just wish I could have done better with, I guess, but um, pavement's really expensive in, in trying to get that done efficiently and cost effectively. You almost need to probably look at an additional article in the future just to pay for pavement. It's that expensive today, hot topic. And then, of course, uh, the pavement project for the superintendent's office, that's not that we need a new driveway. We were gonna, the original plans was to kind of extend a walkway and an additional parking on the side and in the back. But we took it out. We do have a new athletic complex coming where we're concerned of parking, and the superintendent's office is gonna help us on that parking. So. Any questions on that? Yes. Yes, I have a question. Uh, if your capital improvement project budget is adequate, um, but what I'm seeing here is that these are old school things. Um, I realize that uh, trust at the high school needs a lot of work, uh, but I'm wondering if uh, you've been allocating enough and what your current allocation is for your capital improvement budget is at the high school. Spread this. Because most of this project work is uh, done for the high school. If you ask, you have a budget, do you have uh, any money in uh, uh, current in, uh, um, in a, an account somewhere for capital improvements for these projects? Not for these projects. That's what I just. That's why the slides up here. We do, took them out. Do you have a capital? Oh yeah, we have a capital five a five year plan for capital improvements. And how much money do you have in this account right now? In the count right now, uh, with the projects we have, which are very little for this year, I would say close to three hundred. But I don't even in think. Total, in the total account, what do you have right now? Mark, I, I don't know that exact number. It's like kind of a hard question to answer. Do you have an exact number of what we have in the account right now? Well, we <clears throat> add it up, but it's it's part of our uh, it's part of our facilities. Uh, budget that we're going to be right. I would say the articles that we're going to vote on will probably explain them better at that point in time. Um, we did, you're going to see though the facilities budget a lot of red numbers here because we took money out of it just to make sure that we don't raise the mill rate significantly enough for that. So, unfortunately, but I, I'm not worried. The building's in great shape. We have a brand new school. Um, we do have a, a track project that we're trying to suffice, which is now you know 26 years in the making um, you'll see more about that too um, it just feels like uh, every time we do a capital improvement so you could spend a lot of money on capital improvements and we're always scared to do a lot more because we're afraid that we might not get a school budget so it's kind of it's a catch-22 it's kind of scary that way so do you, you offset your capital improvements project by funding it with and your your gets to a point where your capital improvement budget or things you need to do are so overwhelmed so uh, we know about this stuff, okay? It, uh, it seems like uh, things have been uh, uh, denied to be fixed, okay? And, uh, there's some other issues that have been happening. Yeah, actually, we did set a lot of our capital improvements budget off to help the taxpayer in the last few years with COVID money. So we bought school buses, we bought computers, we're doing uh, outdoor projects at the elementary school, uh, community school. Uh, we have uh, porter potties for our sports. We have a safety net for balls, but you'll see those all when you look at the next uh, articles that we take out. So a lot of that money was spent uh, during COVID to help the taxpayer of the RSU, so it wouldn't be a huge increase for them. So I, I don't feel our capital improvements are in bad shape. It's just look at the, the tires. But if you look at most school departments, not much fresh tires on the ground and anywhere. So. So uh, when you go back to the gentleman's question about where is the capital improvements budget been going, well, we've been able to take a lot of these. The track, the track needs a lot of attention. If you, if we don't fix that track this year, I'm not sure what's going to happen to that track because that 600,000 runs out in this September. It was the best efforts ever been done yet to fix that track. That track is used by the entire community, and Aroostook County, not just schools. But we're doing it for schools and school money to get it fixed up so people can walk and all times of the day. We don't close the gate. We don't lock it out, as most schools do. We open it up for the community use and be free of this. So, um, that's a lot of you know uh, effort that we want to make good partnerships to make sure people use the track. But we really do need a new track. Um, and we do have a group that's been working really hard on getting a track. So um, hopefully that works for us. 
Snow canopies at Kierberg Community School. The school was constructed and built with the main doors um, to the outside where recess. There's no snow canopies. We do have some snow that collects and falls off, so it's, it's not a good situation. That is not in the budget, but it's actually in our ESSER funds to pay for that. That protective netting on Benham Drive, so when we hold a soccer game, the balls get kicked over the fence towards the wellness center. You got two or four lanes of traffic to go across. We'll have a net to hopefully keep the balls back a limited number of times. And instead of having students have to run across in a dangerous situation. Um, exterior restrooms for our, our sporting events. There will be a cement slab with water bodies that will rent and bring them in in the fall and then take them back so they're not ours to only have to maintain. But we will have a cement slab that goes down so it's not a constant flow into the school. And it's a little bit of distance from the athletic fields to the school. Uh, and then the uh, learning commons and, and Teague Wing, um, uh, we're going to put it, I don't know what happened during school construction, but it's the only wing that didn't get an outside door. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't pick up on it. I don't think the committee picked up on it. Uh, the other wing on the opposite side towards Glen Street has an exterior door, but we were able to not have to ask the taxpayers for this $800,000 and put the, the door in with COVID money. So. And then, so come next school year, you'll have a brand new exit that goes out into the, towards the, uh, which will be an outdoor classroom. And of course the pre-K area out there. Question. So there's some of your capital improvement. The question you had earlier on your capital improvements, right. a lot of that was paid for. Yeah, sir, funds ranch, okay. mm -hmm. um, it's part of something you've already delegated to another project. Then your snow canopies, that's a design error, is that correct? At the, uh, at the seat at the Carroll Middle School, should that something compensated through the uh, engineering or something? I mean, I'm just looking to you're taking eight hundred four thousand dollars <coughs> from the Esper Grant Fund to fund something else. Better, uh, uh, am I correct? In understanding that? Uh, oh, could we have used the eight hundred four? Well, uh, that's a that's. A, I would say uh, on ESSER 2 funds, you're absolutely right. ESSER 3 funds, it never worked that way. They changed the game. Um, when President Biden took over, there was establishment on the ESSER 3 funds that they had to be set aside for learning loss and classroom activities. So that's when you'll see uh, textbook purchases. We did a lot of that with ESSER funds, so local's gonna have to pay. Um, although you'll see that line has creeped up here when you vote on it. That's because that, that fund in ESSER has, has, has been expended, so. Um, but yeah, ESSER 3 was pretty strict how we could spend money. ESSER 2 was a little more open, and that's why we could do the track project and so on. Thank you, sorry. Yep, no problem. Uh, so, I mean, future, I think you do need the gym roof. We need to look at replacing it's half of the gym roof. And then, of course, the that's the accurate number for pavement, and it's probably higher than that now. So um, it did go up, pavement went up again two weeks ago. So those are not in the budget. There are future things that the district will have to deal with. So what's in the budget? Um, salary increases, health insurance, uh, property and casualty, um, one bus. We had, uh, we were looking at two buses. We, we went to one bus. And the underground fuel tanks were actually taken up at this meeting last year. We talked about how we're gonna split budget for that. Uh, we put money last year to dig the tanks out of the ground. And this year we're buying to get a new tank to put in the ground. So, uh, and that was DEP uh, driven. We couldn't keep those tanks underground anymore. So we had to be updated. Question about that. Why don't you use the municipal uh, fuel depot uh, to take care of your fuel consumption uh, where they, are, they already have their own uh, fuel storage uh, aspect one? Why don't you use the municipal uh, with their, their, their tank system and all that sort of deals um, and car system to take care of that instead of having your own um, fuel. fuel. This is heating oil. Oh, for yeah, heating, heating oil. yeah. But we do our buses with the town. Yes, we do that. So you're, uh, you thought about above ground tank system instead of underground tank system? And where, I mean, where do you have your fuel storage tanks at? Okay. Uh, it's this side of the building over here will be dug out. Mark, it's, uh, it's going to go back on the ground. They're all subsurface. They're, they're underground. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought you have no place you put them above ground, eliminate the deal for. Uh, that, that's 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 uh, that's highway fuel, I believe. Well, I, I've been there, done that sort of stuff. 
Yeah. And actually, you guys are burning mostly wood here, uh, wood pellet systems. So what do you use the fuel for as our backup? Yeah, we use a wood chip, not pellet. We have a chip system here, right. um, and we do backup oil. So whatever's cheaper at the time we buy, we always try to stay a year ahead. And we try to top our tanks off at the end of the year just to make sure if the wood system does go down. So it's not the most reliable system because the feeder system always seems to give us some headaches. But, um, You're but, relying more on fuel than you are on the wood pellet system? No, about 50-50. Yeah. But I would think that uh, taking the tanks out of the ground permanently and building an above ground system uh, would might be more feasible and more economically uh, driven. And so uh, be more than glad to advise from that. So, and, uh, yeah, for the, the high school, we actually, as Mr. Doak mentioned earlier, we split we split the budget to not make such a big hit in the year. So we actually purchased uh, the tank. On last year's budget, so we have the we already have the tank. It just needs to be but I think he's asking, why don't we put the fuel tank above ground? Um, I, I I maybe don't know that. I've never seen a lot of schools having heating oil fuel tanks above ground. Most of them have been underground, but this tank is dated, so it has to come out of the ground. A new one can go in. I've seen where over the road fuel, diesel fuel, is above ground with a cement casing um, in case there's a spill. I haven't seen a lot of that, and I may be not an expert in that, but I have not seen a lot of that for fuel oils, for, for eating oil. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, that would be, uh, you know, someone in engineering. Yeah. And, maybe. and no one in engineering has told us to do that, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, so the five ed techs were added back into the general fund. That's a cost of 161,000. Remember we cut 11, Six uh, would not return. Five needed to return just for services for students. And those were all paid for by ESSER funds prior. That line is dried up. We've expended all the money that's there for that line. So it has to go back in the regular budget. And this is the issue that schools and some of the communities are facing that what looked to be like a great thing, ESSER money, it's going to cause some havoc on the other end. So. So the proposed budget, just a little over 22 million. Um, it's like I said, it's a 1.46 mil increase. The board uh, did a great work with that. They decided they wanted to go no higher than 1.5. We did the best we could to get it down. Um, this is the tax increase. The share between Caribou and Stockholm um, is at the bottom. This is your cost centers that you'll be voting on. Um, most are in line, except for special ed has gone up a little bit. You'll see if there is questions, but um, it is the number of students who are going outside into uh, special purpose private schools um, in the area. We have uh, additional students going um, and we had to hire uh, four extra ed tech one on ones to go with those students to those sites. And the site that's closest to us is OTC in Prescott. Other instruction, uh, basically, uh, we were running with um, uh, part-time AD, and we've now uh, started a whole year with having a full-time AD. And this is the first year that those monies uh, will be reflected in as a full-time and switched over from uh, administration. Um, system administration is quite a drop. You may come up in the articles, but uh, I'll try to answer those questions now. Uh, um, looking to save money um, and knowing that I'm leaving, uh, a large cut was made in the central office to, to do away with the cost of maybe uh, a super tank. So uh, that was reduced significantly. A little nervous about that because you saw our district is not getting smaller and not having a system principal, assistant superintendent or superintendent. Uh, you'll have a superintendent, but we're going to try to go one year without an assistant superintendent. Time will tell. Maybe next year when this when Jane's up here, uh, maybe it will work out. But we're getting bigger. We're not getting smaller. And you're taking on quite a chunk of money to help the taxpayer. But it could come back and slingshot us. Um, mainly uh, transportation and buses. You'll see those are because of some fuel costs. Uh, this is the facility maintenance. That goes back to your capital improvement question. We took out things out of that capital improvements just to save the taxpayer 
uh, from having to have a mill rate that maybe you wouldn't succeed. So it, you know, it was a little bit of a gamble. We don't like it, but there's things that we're rolling the dice on and trying to get um, some of that is just cutting back on fuel cost. And, and we'll explain more of those if we have to. So My question is, Jay, we you were to reduce your facility maintenance costs, okay? Are you actually saving the taxpayer money or are you for going to the uh, uh, to the taxpayer inevitable uh, expenses? I mean, if it's, when you say you reduce that expense, what did you cut out? I mean, if, uh, are you reducing uh, a building maintenance? Are you reducing, uh, 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 what are you reducing it by? The till, still these maintenance, which are, so we've seen, I think, over the years in Caribou, was neglected, and all of a sudden it had to be boom, the big deal, okay? Um, so facilities maintenance is probably one of the biggest areas that you should probably be reducing, but expanding. Okay, you have an old building and a new building, okay? Now, I don't know what the new building is going to cost you to maintain, um, but the old building is still requiring extensive maintenance costs. So I thought for, for the building facility itself. So I'm wondering, are you actually saving the taxpayer money by doing that? Or are you uh, um, just prolonging the inevitable? Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, I think we're prolonging the inevitable. That's a good point. Um, and we've been doing that for years now, just trying to play the, uh, the game of you know, what is going to be acceptable and what's not going to be acceptable. I think we've done a good job so far uh, managing that. We don't have facilities that are uh, tired and worn out. We've maintained them and kept them up, I think. Wayne St. Peter's crew has done a great job. We have our own carpenters. We try to save money from hiring out. Um, but yeah, I think it is inevitable. The tar is a great example. Um, the track is another great example. Um, we've been doing this for years. So what, what definitely happens, okay, is that you're, you're robbing from Peter to pay Paul. So, and the problem is, okay, you're slowly, your buildings are deteriorating, okay? Like you said with the tar, okay, this sort of thing, okay? Uh, that's just inevitable. So if you can, if you're willing to rob from someplace, it always seems that facilities maintenance um, and this sort of thing is the first thing it takes a cut. Okay, um, bus. It, it always the first thing it takes a cut, and that's and in the long run. Okay, it's the one that takes the biggest hit. We we built. So my only my only comment is, okay, is that um, you need to put something back into there and. Take from someplace else. I mean, that, uh, um, it's very, very important. Um, you want your ability to drive to the uh, drive to the parking lot and pull a pothole and stuff like that. Um, no, you don't want. <coughs> you want your building to be warm, comfortable, even keel uh, for heating and sort of thing. I just think that robbing for facilities maintenance is not a good idea. Yeah, I'm. I'm I would quite call robbing. Um, we've done a pretty good job in this district. Even before I got here, maintaining some of that. So, uh, being more efficient, wood chip boilers, light overhauls. Um, like in here, we're going to replace the rug this summer. Um, this rug has got to be 25 plus, maybe. Sorry. Uh, so lighting, like, what is it? There's LED lighting in here? 35. 35. 35. Wow. Just LED lighting in here? Uh, these aren't LEDs, no. <laughs> We did our, our efficiency. Uh, lighting is going on and off with motion sensors in our classrooms to save. But that's all before I got here, too. So, I mean, it's been some, I, I can't say this district's been managed poorly. I think it's been just managed exceptionally over the last 15, 20 years. So, uh, debt service, new school will go down every year. Just how the program is a 20 year commitment. Uh, so, that's. So taxes, uh, the difference uh, with the 1.5 mills is a little over almost 700,000 additional monies. We still continue to use $100,000 homes. Most are a little bit higher, but if they are, you can, in your mind, do the math. So it's a $41 increase. Um, a little bit of a savings to stop up just because of how the funding is of the RSU. An additional local. Um, the majority of schools I talked to in Rooster County, they all went up in their additional local. Uh, some have never used additional local and they didn't really have to continue to do that. But um, additional local is the difference between what's in the budget and what your local allocation and state allocation. And the difference is, is the additional local. 
and we went up uh, a, a million point four this year, which was slightly higher than last year. Additional local is not, they, the state forces us to pick out a few things and we did put transportation and, and special ed, but it's really your entire budget and the services you provide to students um, that causes that to go up also. And you should have a little bit of additional local, um, but there is a point when it gets to be too much too. So you have to look at cuts. And then 82% of your budget is insurance and salaries. Reducing human beings is a big piece, but we, we gambled on that math and music foreign language, it makes great high schools. We'll make up the math classes, the music. We were running a, a music teacher in the budget for two years and didn't have anybody. So at three years, we had to make a decision. So it's unfortunate. Yeah, which you don't want to lose your competitiveness with the schools around you. So, but everybody's looking for music teachers, so it's a really hard. It's it's the issue. We got to ask ourselves, right? Why aren't people going into education? It's 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 hard to imagine. The, the numbers that have dropped in local universities towards being educators. It's, it, you know, if you've been invested as long as I have and the passion I have for it, it really hurts. So, okay. All set? Um, let me just, so a lot of people request a slide every year. I'm surprised that they, they seem to like it. So, um, when you look at the cost centers that you'll be voting on, this is how a dollar is broken out. So regular instruction is 31 cents, special ed is 13, uh, CTE is eight, extracurricular activities is three. Um, with, with the comment about facilities, we always seem to, we always seem to cut from these areas to try to balance budgets. It's kind of crazy how we do that. Remember, uh, was it three years ago? We took away two sports programs. You wouldn't believe the phone calls that came into the office. And we put them back because the numbers went up. But when we cut some of those programs, we had like three and five kids involved. Now we have 18 and 20, so it's really nice to see. And post COVID, you don't want to take anything away from kids. So um, it's interesting. So um, anyway, so facilities is still. Pretty good size in our budget to maintain and operate. So, uh, kind of similar, just expenses where it comes from. Um, this is including the debt service, but this 69% really is like 82. But when you put the debt service in, it's money comes in and money goes right back out. So, it kind of offsets the budget a little bit. And I think, well, I've given you opportunities for questions, but if you have any other questions on this, no, we can move to the articles. Yes. Yes. Mr. Joe, uh, thank you for the very good presentation you did You did a very nice job. My question is, Kay, in regards to your uh, salaries and benefits, Kay, is there been any, any uh, work done in trying to reduce, uh, for instance, health insurance, Kay? Um, we, uh, um, in certain areas, as told consumers, we have to reduce our benefit package, this sort of thing. Has the, the district looked at and and when you say contractual arrangements, okay, we realize um, contractual arrangements are, are forgiving, but when the people are negotiating uh, for the district, okay, um, are they looking at reducing some of the budgetary items that flat this sort of deal? I mean, you're looking at what in some cases right now a 200% or a 300% uh, increase in some uh, benefit packages. I mean, it, uh, look at your uh, I just looked at it this morning, but um, some of them are, are quite substantial. Um, and i just questioning whether um, when you're negotiating um, your packages with the contractual people that you're negotiating with, whether you can um, are looking at that. Okay? I realize it's easy to give, okay, but what it's coming down to right now is that the taxpayer pay, ultimately pays, okay, 
um, whether it's the municipal side, school district side, whatever, up the taxpayer ultimately paid. So um, it's time for people to realize, okay, is that, I mean, my health insurance, I don't have a $250 or a $1,000 deductible, or something like that. My deductible is $5,000, okay? Um, so it's, I, I'm just wondering, when you're when you're bringing this stuff up, question about contractual arrangements um, and salaries, um, what has been done about trying to prevent that from increasing even more? Because right, so right now, biggest part of your budget, okay, you're looking at five point something to six percent increase in overall your budget, and you're relating it mostly to uh, um, wages and benefits, okay? So it's like, okay. Okay, and, and you cut a lot of other things up here. We to get that up. The bulk of the package that you're asking for the city taxpayers is for uh, wages and benefits. Okay, so I'm just wondering if there was any question, any con concern that was taken in the contractual arrangements prior uh, to, uh, like with other other uh, uh, when we're on a municipal level, we have to take that consideration also. Yeah, it's a great question and it's something that we wrestle with all the time. Um, the problem is um, uh, a few years back, the state went with the $40,000 increase for minimum salary for teachers. So that reflected throughout the contract. Many main schools. Were you obligated to do that? The state never obligated anybody to do anything. And I see right now the state has a, uh, a law. They're trying to do something right now to increase the level of pay. And so the state should be responsible for doing that. Okay, well, I'll try to answer that. Just let me try to answer that. So the forty thousand dollars is what, we, we, and they were offsetting districts that were taking time to get there. And they gave you so much time, five years. Uh, there's a new bill that just was put in this spring to pay teachers fifty thousand for a base salary, uh, and it's it's a bipartisan bill that has support on both both parties. It's going to pass. So it's it, we need to get ready for that. It, and even uh, when there's pressures and challenges from communities like the gentleman raises. That's going to pass fifty thousand. The other bill that's in front of them right now too is Ed Techs. We have any Ed Techs in the room? In support services, they're looking for an increased pay for Ed Techs and support services that could put you just under um, the wage of a, of a teacher. Yeah. So a teacher starting out is roughly about thirty three dollars an hour, roughly thirty three thirty, and, and an Ed Tech could be in the high twenties. Um, so there's a little issues. I think you know at schools and districts that are affluent and paying teachers a little bit more and, and you know there's not the one salary in the state of maine of course we're paid by communities um that's going to ratchet it up um the problem with uh the negotiations and, and pulling things away um we won't have any teachers um there are there are places right now i go everywhere i go you see that 19 dollars an hour 20 dollars an hour um and we could say oh well go there and work you know don't, don't have to work for us that's not, that's not, it's a wage that we have to pay people in order to maintain the cost of living. And I know it increases the taxpayer responsibility, but with the 50,000 and the ed tech and support staff salaries in legislation, I, I really do think it's gonna pass. And I would stand here and say that if I didn't think it was gonna pass. So um, this 50,000 will be, uh, the state will offset schools by $2,500 a salary each year for five years until you get to the, to your minimum 50,000. So um, interesting enough, we've lost uh, bus driver custodians. And we had a bus driver custodian leave a neighboring district, come work for us. Worked for us for about a month, left us and worked for the highway department here in the town. Got $4 more an hour, worked for a while, and then came back, came back, came back to the district. That's what, he was telling us. Anyway, I, it, 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 to me, that doesn't matter. I just think we need to take care of the schools and, and make sure. And it goes back to what I'm saying. Um, there are people that think we should pay teachers 80000 because we're not getting teachers. And, and we should. Well, we can't. And we should. We should pay people, but there could be a thing. And I, I agree with that. I mean, my biggest problem is okay, that well, what can we afford to do? Yeah. Uh, it is a great question, and I would say um, six years ago we, we we took the insurance and looked at it, and we were paying um, like eighty five percent across the board. Um, we upped it to ninety five and one hundred percent for single 
plans and 70% for families to save money. Uh, what happens, and why wouldn't it, um, if you uh, have a family and your husband can have insurance and you have insurance, they jump on the single. So now we swayed ourselves to the single. I think it's going to see a reverse. Schools will go back to saying 85% across the board. Because there are some insurance plans. There was one insurance plan I was told the other day that's 42000 and some in this district as high as thirty two. That's a lot of money to be totally responsible for. Of course, a single plan is not $32,000. That would be the family. And we pay 70% of that. So um, it is, it's a definite issue. And when we negotiate, we right up front tell them that it's not your fault as teachers and it's not our fault as district, but what can we do to work together? And we do have some incentives to get them to think more healthy. And, and it has worked in the past. And we've had many cuss few years I come up here with a zero increase in insurance because of the program that we have. But this year uh, we were at six. So and it fluctuated every year. So but yeah, and negotiations are, are um, Great times to, to sit down and discuss. I, I call it problem solving, not, not adversarial. And uh, we need to listen and try to do what we can, but be responsible to, to everybody in the taxpayer too. So. But the $50,000 is bipartisan, so it's gonna make it. Uh, and the ed tech and, and sports staff, we're not sure if they're gonna give any uh, incentive money to help. I'm, I'm sure they would. Where that money's all come from too is, is, is a little bit of a mystery too. But. It, they did 30,000 to 40, and now we're going to 50. Um, still nervous. There's, there's, a, there's a feeling of why we don't have people wanting to go into education, and it scares me. So, okay, those are great questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, once again, thank you for coming. We'll vote on the articles, and if there's any other further questions, I'll do my best to try to answer those. Yeah. I just Oops. thumbed through this and, you know, I kind of bring up the same thing every year, but uh, telephone and postage costs. Last year, I just added it up for, from all your articles in here. It was 37000 uh, This year, for the budget, it's 40800 I guess my question to Mark maybe, maybe is, what was our actual cost last year for phone and- We, we dropped the phone zone. <coughs> we dropped the phone number. We looked at the phones over the last three years and we, it wasn't possible we had budget, so we did drop the phone number. The phone was in there. Well, I, I just went through and added it up. Yeah, but, but we dropped the phone number. Well, and I got 37,000 for the, Uh, 22, 23 budget on all the articles. I went through each one of them, and then for the proposed budget, it's up to forty thousand eight hundred. And I just wondered, what really is our actual cost on phones and? and yeah, I'd have to give that number to you, but the the, the, the budget was increased to, to match closer to actual. Um, okay, so but we did drop the phones. I mean, I think when we take the articles up, you'll see that. Yeah, I'll, but I'll, phones is also fax lines, photocopy. Well, that postage is, mi is mixed in there too. Yeah, got postage. Right? And the post, of course, the postage has <laughs> been going up. up, up. That, does that include rental of coffee machines? No, that's that's somewhere that's else. That, that's a different. That's a different line. I it just seems for a school district that has two buildings now and in a superintendent's office uh, between cell phones and I know you have cell phones, you know, uh, administrators have cell phones and so forth that the district is paying for. But first, quick. We do have a lot of offices with you know, nurses' stations and each building, right, but guidance and speech. I mean, all, there's a phone throughout. So, right, right, right. But I, I just, it, it just kind of flabbergasts me that it's that high. 
you know, that's uh, if you had to increase it because you didn't have enough last year, is that is that what you're saying? Right? The, correct. But again, uh, phone and postage are, are mixed. Are, are, it's a combined account. Correct. And um, I do, you know, postage. I know our postage costs have gone up. Um, and we mail we mail a lot of stuff you know, as a district. Okay, just uh, and I've asked this uh, before on billings on phones. Does each building get their own bill, and then it goes to the central office to be paid, or is it just one bill for all three facilities? It's, it's one bill, and then it's allocated amongst all of the. Okay. 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 Uh, we can move to three point two election of a moderator. Do I have a motion? Nominate Brent McElmay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Or I'm sorry, discussion. All in favor. So Mr. Do you, Frank Michael, swear that it will support the Constitution of the United States and the state of Maine so long that you shall continue to be the citizen thereof and that you will faithfully discharge in the best of your abilities the duties incumbent upon you uh, as a moderator of the Eastern University Regional School Year 39 budget meeting held on May 17, 2023, according to the Constitution and the laws of the state of Maine. Now we'll have the swearing in of the ballot clerk. Yeah. So we'll have the swearing in of the ballot clerk. Um, do you, Lori Chapman, swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Maine so long as you shall continue to be a citizen thereof? And that you will faithfully discharge to the best of your abilities the duties incumbent on you as ballot clerk of the Eastern University Regional School Unit Number 39 budget meeting on May 17, 2023, according to the Constitution and the laws of the state of Maine. I do. Thank you. Signs. Yes. So we have 19 articles to uh, consider. Each will require a motion, a second, call for discussion. That would be time to ask questions or comments. Um, Remember that number, uh, Article 14 requires a written vote. And I'd ask that when we do vote, other than that one, that when you raise your hand, you raise your evidence that you're a registered voter in the RSU. With that, I'll begin. If you could follow along on your, your handouts, I'm on page seven, uh, Article 1, which is regular instruction. And it reads, to see what sum IRSU 39 will be authorized to expand for regular instruction. The Board of Education recommends $6,908,892.82. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. 
It's been moved and seconded to approve Article 1. Is there discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All in favor of Article 1, please raise your ballots. Thank you. Uh, hands down. And any opposed? Thank you. The motion is carried. <coughs> Article two is the special education article. It reads, to see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expend for special education. The Board of Education recommends $2,838,191.85. So Motion to accept. Second. Thank you. And seconded. Uh, any discussion? Yes, Bruce. Um, line item purchase services gone from eight thousand to one hundred and fifty three thousand six hundred. Is there a specific item there that that has raised that that much? Yeah, purchase services. Good question, Bruce. Um, I mentioned that in my presentation. Um, this is the cost of the students who are going to um, outside schooling. Um, preferably OTC. Uh, there are additional students going there next year and it requires us to hire four one-on-ones to be with those students. <coughs> Other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 2, raise your hands. Hands down. Any opposed? The motion has carried. Article 3, Career and Technical Education, it reads, to see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expand for career and technical education. The Board of Education recommends $1,704,677.61. So Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on Article 3? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of Article 3, please raise your, your cards. Thank you. Hands down. And any opposed? Thank you. The motion has carried. Article 4, other instruction. To see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expand for other instruction, the Board of Education recommends Six hundred twenty-nine thousand six hundred seventy-three dollars and two cents. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded to approve the article. Is there discussion on Article Four? Yes, John. Yes, I, I'm trying to understand something. So when it was the safe risk of vocational student advances to an upper level, state level, or um, why are, are they uh, allowed or compensated the same way that the city? Basketball team to go to the Bangor tournament or state tournament, something like that. That's a great question. Uh, we try to do everything we can equally, and if it's a state competition, then we do pay for that. Uh, the national level competition, we have not uh, paid for that as, as a school district since inception. So um, there are clubs that can raise money to afford some of that, and some parents offset that. But at the state level, when we do competition, uh, we are um, paying for that. So any student that goes to a state level competition will be compensated or uh, reimbursed in that manner. Yeah, we have like hotel rooms. We bus them on their own buses. Okay. Yeah. Whether it's vocational or remedial or okay, whatever, vocational especially. Yeah, vocational. Um, all our sports, uh, our e team, our e, e sports team, our state champs have paid well, for all we, that. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Music. If we do travel. So is there any accommodation that can be made for if a student advances to, let's say, a national competition that the school district can do to uh, advance that uh, student capability to uh, be able to allow him to go that way? This district has not traditionally done that at, at any level. So. But is there any way that can be done to do that? Uh, we'd have to look into what we would cost, work with our CT, and see what the additional cost is for national. I do believe uh, we, you know, it would 
We could look at if there's plane flights or food costs. Well, the thing is, it would be a proud moment for a student from Caribou High to advance to a national recognized um, or even a team, right. national recognized uh, uh, function. Okay, that, uh, and I think the school district should be able to afford them somewhat compensation, right. maybe not totally, but um, somewhat compensation. I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely. And we'll do the best we can with the time. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion on Article 4. Seeing none, I'll call for, for the vote. All those in favor of Article 4, other discussion, please raise your cards. Thank you. And any opposed? Thank you. The Article 4 is passed. Article 5 is student and staff support to see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expend for student and staff support. The Board of Education recommends $1,402,763.72. So the moved and seconded to approve Article 5. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote on Article 5. All those in favor, raise your cards. And then, any opposed? Thank you. Uh, Article 5 is approved. Article 6, System Administration. To see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expand for system administration, the Board of Education recommends $753,604.28. So, is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a, a second on system administration. Is there a discussion? Yes, John. Is there any conversation that's been uh, really, uh, thought into the, uh, the benefit package and all sort of thing? The benefit, does this include the benefit package and all the salaries and everything around? Is this part of the negotiated uh, contract? John, 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 this article is strictly is central office, superintendent, assistant superintendent, business manager. There was no negotiations. There's not a contract that represents them. They kind of just on their own. Uh, year, year to year, all the secretaries are not part of the union in that office. So there is no negotiations. They just get what we ever decide to get. So your increase, your increase for your total office was how much? Uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Yeah. That went down. It's a decrease. It's a decrease. Excuse me. Uh, it's a decrease for next year by uh, 64,000, a little over 64,000. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Other discussion? All in favor of Article 6, raise your cards. Thank you. And any opposed? Motion has passed for Article 6. Article 7, School Administration. See what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expend for school administration. The Board of Education recommends $768,409.20. So moved. Thank second. You. And moved and seconded to approve Article 7. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of Article 7, please raise your card. Cards down, and any opposed? Thank you. The motion has carried. Article 8 is transportation and buses. To see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expand for transportation and buses, the Board of Education recommends one million two hundred nine thousand five hundred ninety-seven dollars and sixty-three cents. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve Article Eight. Is there discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of Article Eight, please raise your cards. And hands down. Any opposed? Motion has passed. Article 9, facilities maintenance. To see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expend for facilities maintenance, 
The Board of Education recommends two million four hundred nineteen thousand four hundred forty-two dollars and twenty-two cents. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve Article Nine. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of Article 9, please raise your cards. Thank you. And those opposed? The motion has passed. Article 10 is debt service. To see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to extend for debt service, the Board of Education recommends $3,327,000. Second. Removed and seconded to approve Article 10. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of Article 10, please raise your cards. Thank you. And any opposed? The motion is carried. Article 11, other expenditures. To see what sum RSU 39 will be authorized to expend for other expenditures. The Board of Education recommends $90,500. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded to approve Article 11. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of Article 11? Get your cards. Thank you. And any opposed, same sign. Thank you. Article 11 has passed. Article 12 is state local uh, EPS funding allocation. It's a long one. Uh, to see what sum RSU 39 will appropriate for the total cost of funding public edu education from pre kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act, and to see what sum RSU 39 will raise and assess as each municipality's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from pre-kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act in accordance with the main revised statutes, Title 20-A, Section 1568. Recorded amounts uh, set forth below. And I won't try to uh, articulate that chart. <coughs> Um, for the explanation. Move to accept. But uh, the Board of Education recommends the dollar amounts in the chart, bringing a total of $2,826,451.17. Move to accept. Thank you. Uh, move to second. Article 12. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of Article 12, please raise your, your cards. Thank you. And any opposed to Article 12? The motion has passed. Article, um, Article 13, non-state funded <coughs> debt service. To see what sum RSU 39 will raise and appropriate for the annual payment on debt service previously approved by RSU 39 voters for non-state funded school construction projects, non-state funded portions of the school construction projects, and minor capital projects in addition to the funds appropriated as the local share of RSU 39's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from pre-kindergarten to grade 12. The Board of Education recommends $189,111. So moved. Second. Uh, moved and seconded to approve Article 13. Is there discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of Article 13, please raise your cards. Hands down. And any opposed? The um, motion for to approve Article 13 has passed. Article 14 is additional local funds. And this is your written ballot. It's noted there. Uh, but we'll have a motion second and discuss first. To see what sum RSU 39 will raise and appropriate in additional local funds, recommend $1,472,211, which exceeds the state's essential programs and services allocation model by recommending $1,472,211, 
as required to fund the budget recommended by the Board of Education. The Board of Education recommends $1,472,211 for additional local funds and gives the following reasons for exceeding the state's essential programs and services funding model by $1,472,211. And I'll skip the explanation, but uh, the bullet points are special education and transportation. Second. We moved and seconded to approve Article 14 additional local funds. Is there a discussion? Yes, Joe. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to understand okay, uh, the relationship, especially with <laughs> local funding, why we don't have a better relationship between, let's say, city government and the RSU. Um, this is a very significant uh, increase. Um, as hard as the city government tries to do flat line funding uh, with our municipal budgets, okay, and then we have to adhere, okay, and we adhere to okay, the RSU budget, which we don't know about until pretty much later in the day, okay, and I want to know why it is that way. Um, I guess I kind of understand it, okay. But uh, uh, the city government, okay, and it's something people, the general public needs to understand, okay, that city government does everything we can to do to flatline, flatline our budget, which we've done again this year. But now we have to take your budget. So um, I'm just making a statement to understand why we don't have a better open relationship. Um, we have chamber of the boards, uh, our committees, okay, whatever. We don't meet once or twice a year, um, especially when you're going your budgetary process, we're going through ours. Ours is very public, very open. Um, we meet every three years back. We carry spreadsheet is very, very, uh, very good. And I'd like to understand why, okay, uh, the, the relationship with the RSU and the Caribou City is <coughs> not open as much as it. Um, I will leave it at that, okay. Um, I will vote again uh, against this measure, but I just want to understand why um, we don't have more of an open relationship, uh, especially where we're carrying front of the burden, um, and we have to go through this process here, okay? Um, should we, able to come, we should be able to be neighbors, we'll be able to sit down and understand why, okay, we're not, uh, <coughs> not neighbors, okay? And, uh, but I guess we're not, okay? And, uh, there's two different sides of this city, and uh, it's time to put it, put it away, so. Um, I will end my rant with that. Go ahead. Well, John, this is the first time I've seen you here. Uh, actually, that, actually, you want to know why? Because I try to watch it on TV. Our meetings aren't on the same night. Actually, I try to watch it on uh, TV, okay, but it's very, very hard to see. But the thing is, okay, so I haven't seen you in a city council meeting. So it's uh, what the thing is, okay, we should have an open dialogue, open conversation. It's 24 uh, 7 between both parties. So. The next meeting is when? June 5th. Be more than glad to come. I think John raises a great point. Um, I think, first of all, in a legal sense, the RSU is a separate entity from the city yeah, because we have multiple towns. We used to have limestone and stock them. We, we don't want to uh, necessarily um, favor one community over the other because Stockholm is a very good partner, and I've always said that, very good neighbor. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong uh, moving forward in the future that probably improving. I think there were some issues uh, a few years back uh, of, of uh, some issues that were aired publicly about the school superintendent. Oh, yeah. um, but you know that th that here, I think there was time to need that to kind of cool down. Uh, I do feel uh, there's a momentum uh, going forward that there probably could be more sharing. Um, uh, uh, Penny's here tonight. Uh, she has come to our, our budget meetings. Our budget meetings are open to the public. Comes all the time. I think the important thing is, okay, is that we all we're in this together, okay. Yep. And things, okay. You're gonna bring me. You're gonna bring us a bill here, okay. That's uh, uh, some, uh, advocate for a, uh, a two or a three mil increase, okay, in our in our tax office, okay? city budget. We're working after approval, okay. That's the bottom line, okay. And uh, rightfully do, okay. I'm not gonna get into that, okay. But the thing is, okay, is that let's talk about this stuff, guys. I mean, it's like. You know, we're in this together. It's like we're not two separate. We're two separate entities, but we're all serving the same people. Um, you know, and I, I just, I. Well, I think, I think the the first step forward this year was the sit down and talk about the track. Right. Yeah. I think people think the track is just an RSU, Carroll High School, but it's used countywide. We don't close it to the community. 
<laughs> Anybody can come. I think it was a great opportunity for, for some sharing. Uh, uh, last year I mentioned a penny also that child care is an urgency. It's a great opportunity for the town and the school department to probably share something. It, it didn't quite make it to fruition. I, I do think moving forward, you might see better uh, relationships improving, and you'll probably get to that point that you're referring to where okay. maybe we do some. My thing is, our, our money is limited. Every, there's only so much money. The pot is only so big. Yeah. The pot is only so big. So we have all have to figure out how we manage that pot. Okay. And, uh, I mean, it's no difference than any other business, okay, whatever you have. Yeah. The pot is only so big. We all want, we all need, okay, we all uh, desire, okay. But the pot is only so big. I, I gotta uh, try to give credit to the school board. There hasn't been a year since I've been the superintendent where we haven't thought about the tax bill. No, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Okay, it's, uh, it's just, Sorry, I didn't yeah. my rent. I, I, but I do I do hear you the partnership and I think going forward most communities will have to look at that and do that. I think there is a partnership. Wherever you're going, it's gonna be the same way. It's, uh, well maybe not so much, but it's, uh, well where I'm going is uh, more of a, a budget committee yeah, yeah, exactly. overseas because uh, it's a municipality. This is an RSU, it's a little different by law. So but anyway, it is a great point. Um, and all our meetings are open to the public. We invite everybody to come. We show them all on TV now, too. So we're much better off post COVID than ever. Yeah. Okay. But that's a great point. Thank you. Other discussion? This is Article 14. Uh, see no discussion. I'll call for the vote. And Lori, how would you like to proceed? Um, the cards that you've been putting up, if you could just put yes or no on it, bring it up and put it in the ballot box, please. And just so you see, it's empty. There's pens on that table and there's pens right here.
All right, I have the results of the, uh, the written ballot, and uh, this article, Article 14, Additional Local Funds, has passed a three, a 39 yes and 3 no. So the motion is passed, and we'll move on to Article 15, uh, which summarizes the proposed school budget. It reads, to see what sum RSU 39 will authorize the Board of Education to expend for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024, from RSU 39's contribution <coughs> to the total cost of funding public education from pre-kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Central Program and Services Funding Act, non-state funded school construction projects, additional local funds for school purposes under the main revised statutes, Title 20-A, Section 15690, Unexpended balances, tuition receipts, state subsidy, and other receipts for the support of schools. The Board of Education recommends $22,053,109.54. Any Second. Moved and seconded to approve Article 15. Is there discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Up. Thank you. Your hands down. And those opposed? Hands up. Thank you. The motion, Article 15, has passed. Article 16 authorizes expenditure of grants and other receipts. It reads, in addition to amounts approved in the preceding articles, shall the Board of Education be authorized to expend other sums as may be received from federal or state grants or other sources during the fiscal year for school purposes, provided that such grants, programs, or other sources do not require the expenditure of other funds not previously appropriated. So moved. Second. It's been, uh, moved and seconded to approve Article 16. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. And any opposed? Same sign. The motion has passed. Uh, Article 17 authorizes that uh, the adult education program and raises the local share. It reads, the C of R239 will appropriate $243,500 for adult education and raise $100,000 as the local share with authorization to expand any additional incidental or miscellaneous receipts in the interest and for the well-being of the adult education program. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve Article 17. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your hand. Hands down. Any opposed? The motion has passed. 
Article 18 authorizes the disposition of any additional state subsidies uh, received. To see if in the event that RSU number 39 receives more state education subsidy than the amount included in its budget, shall the Board of Education be authorized to use all or part of the additional state subsidy to increase expenditures for school purposes <coughs> in cost center categories approved by the school board, increases uh, the allocation of finances in a reserve fund approved by the school board, and or decrease the local cost share expectation as defined in Title 20A, Section 15671-A, 1 and B for local property taxpayers for funding public education as approved by the school board. So moved. Second. Uh, moved to second to approve Article 18. Is there a discussion? Yes, John. Question. That, uh, so is this the same avenue that, the, so in other words, if you get additional revenue sharing uh, from the Department of Education or someplace like that, um, over and above what you're, that we, we, we revert back to the city, the city to offset uh, any expenditures by the department? Um, that's what happened last time. Correct. Yeah. Uh, if this, if, if there's a supplemental budget the governor would put out in the next month or two, offsetting, we don't have to give it back to the city. Uh, it was um, a mix last time this happened. Uh, I felt important to give it back to the city because when the original vote was taken for for the 55 percent, it was to save taxpayer money. So that's why we gave it back to the city. Going forward, we probably wouldn't do that again. We'd probably keep it in our own budget because we could either carry it forward to help taxpayers, spend it on additional costs that we have, or give it back if we like. But that one time we did give it back. Um, I don't know if it benefited or, or didn't benefit. Um, we were never really told if it was. It was more accountable. Right. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I advocated with other schools to do the same, so. Um, but going forward, we wouldn't have to do that. This is only in case there's a supplemental budget, which I don't believe there will be one, so it's probably moved. No. Just in case she would come up with, she is coming with a supplemental budget, but there's no money for education, so. All around the housing. Other discussion? So you now call for the vote on Article 18. All those in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Any opposed, raise your hand. Thank you. The motion has passed. <clears throat> Article 19 authorizes a transfer to the Capital Reserve Fund. Shall the school board be authorized to transfer up to $200,000 from unanticipated additional tuition revenues to the RSU School Capital Reserve Fund and to expand such reserve funds for maintenance of plant and minor remodeling as may be needed at the school board's discretion. So moved. Seconded. Been moved and seconded to approve Article 19. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 19. Thank you, hands down, and any opposed? Thank you. The article has passed. And that is my responsibility. I turn the chair back over to the board chair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, now 4.1, the board will enter into executive session to consider the suspension or expulsion of a student pursuant to 1 MSRA 405, parenthesis 6, parenthesis B. Is there a second? Sure. Any discussion? All in favor. Thank you everyone for attending. We appreciate it so much.